Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is all about that magical, marvellous, beautiful and incredibly Christmassy witchy plant, mistletoe. Now this video came about because I started researching my Yule video and as I was searching one of the first things I thought about was to look at was mistletoe and then reading my books and looking at all the information that I've got I realised that mistletoe is actually a video in itself and so hence why I thought I would share this information with you. So mistletoe as I'm sure you are all aware is a parasite plant meaning that it takes all of its nutrients and food sources from the tree that it rests upon. Mistletoe is known to grow on oak, hawthorn, ash, lime, varying trees, mostly those, although rarely on oak. As a result, it never touches the ground and it is known as hanging between the worlds, between the air and between the earth. And this means that it is a symbol of the in-between places. So what do we mean by the in-between places? It is those hidden places where the Fae inhabit. It is those places which are near where the spirits might hang out before they talk to you. It is the secret places of those that we don't quite see. And this is their plant, the mistletoe. The mistletoe was therefore symbolic of life in these in-between places. So one of the first things you need to know about mistletoe is it was considered incredibly unlucky to when you're cutting mistletoe to let the mistletoe touch the ground. Because it's never touched the ground, it's only ever been up in the canopy. Ovid, who was an amazing Roman poet in about the first century AD, said that the Druids sang to mistletoe. Now, I don't actually believe that they did sing to mistletoe, and in my investigations, that's not what I've heard. However, they did revere it as a sacred plant, and still do. Mistletoe, especially at this time of year, is when it comes into its berry. But you can find young leaves, flowers, and berries and old leaves on the plant all at the same time. It has every stage of its life appearing at the same time. It doesn't follow, therefore, the rules for reproduction in any way or form. You know, there's everything there at the same time. Because it has the young, the old, the berries, the flowers, the young leaves, the old leaves, it was considered, therefore, very much a plant of equality. This parity was very important. And so in previous days, what would happen is that um, once you had received your mistletoe for Yule, you would hang the mistletoe above your bed. Now, it was considered to bring equality to relationships. So especially if it was your first time with a partner or just first time, so your marital night, for example, if you hung mistletoe above the bed, it ensured equality and domestic harmony, parity in your relationship. It is from this, I think, that we get this kissing under the mistletoe tradition from. I spent quite a bit of my teenage years snogging underneath the mistletoe and wonderful fun it was too. My, I seem to remember that my mother and my father might have done a snog underneath the mistletoe, much to my horror. Ugh, grim. And uh, uh, my mother, being my mother, of course, abides by all traditions and plucking the berries from the tree. I do remember that this is very important. Tradition does state that once you have snogged underneath the mistletoe, you must pick a berry for every kiss that you've had. And when you have picked all the berries, the mistletoe has imparted all of its magic to the people beneath. And so then you just use it as decoration. No more snogging. 
So mistletoe grows over several different tree species in the UK, but the one species that it was revered for more than any other is, of course, the sacred oak tree. This was the best mistletoe that you could find. It's quite rare growing on an oak tree, but the oak tree is the sacred tree for the Druids, and the mistletoe growing on it meant that it had the energy of the oak tree associated with it. So they would wear fully white robes decorated with crowns of wreaths of holly and ivy or mistletoe itself, whatever you know they felt appropriate, and using their highly decorated gilded sickles, they would ceremoniously cut down the mistletoe at midday. This is when the sun is at its highest point in the sky, and as mistletoe is guarded by the sun, it meant it had its most sun energy encased within it. These mistletoe were used in the Yule celebrations. The Druids would bless mistletoe and then hand it out to each household head so that they could hang it in their homes over the Yule period. This would bring them luck protection, equality and parity, domestic bliss and ward off evil. Very important at this time of year, you need to keep those evil spirits from your door. Mistletoe was therefore a very holy plant. No proper house would be seen without it, including mine. However, at this year, Unless I can find some to buy, I'm going to be a bit stuck. I've never bought mistletoe in my life and I can't find any. It's a bit of a worry. Mistletoe has a couple of other magical properties. Wands made from mistletoe are said to ward off werewolves. Well, I wish I'd known this when I was 10. And if you haven't seen my werewolf video, I'll put it up here for you. Other magical properties of mistletoe are that it is supposed to keep you eternally young. There is an Italian fairy tale where a knight was travelling one Christmas day. It's always Christmas then, but I'm sure it was Yule in olden times. Along this road whereupon he met a fairy, and at her feet she held the Holy Grail and a crescent moon. But in her arms she held a bunch of mistletoe, and she told him that it was the mistletoe that kept her eternally young. So maybe it will. I, possibly it does have some youthful properties in it. Recently, mistletoe has been studied in anti-cancer treatments and it has shown to be very successful at stopping hematomas in rats' livers. Now, this is in rats and so to put it onto a human is a slightly different process. However, there is a lot of really interesting scientific work around this. Mistletoe doesn't follow a standard plant life cycle, a bit like a cancer cell doesn't follow a standard life cycle. In the olden days, they would have said that this correlation was obvious. For example, on the mistletoe, they produce their berries the second year after they produce their flowers. First year, you'll find flowers on a mistletoe bush, Second year, you'll find berries and some more flowers. Other magical qualities of mistletoe, it, it is great for conception. Possibly to do with the fact that they hung the mistletoe over their beds. And so why not try it this Yule time? If you're looking for a baby, and now is a great time to produce one, hang some mistletoe above your bed and, you know, get to it. Have fun. However, if you don't want to do any of that, you can always decorate your Yule log with some mistletoe because that is one of the things that really should be going on it. Don't forget, my Patreon meeting is coming up in a week or so, so do have a look at my Patreon account and join our coven. I also have my gift vouchers. They're all available. Have a look in the description below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll put a couple of playlists up here which you might enjoy. Have a look and I will see you in a few days.